Hi, I'm Michelle Cooper and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to make a do-it-yourself sketchbook, sometimes called a leporello or an accordion or concertina sketchbook. We're going to start with the cover, which I made by cutting down one of my old watercolors. The size originally was 15 inches, or no, 22 inches long. It's painted on 140 pounds watercolor paper, nine inches tall, and then 24 inches long with a little extension on it, making it 25 and a half inches long, so I could do a fold over here. It wasn't quite long enough. You'll see how that fold over works later on, but it certainly isn't necessary. You could just cut it off somewhere between 24 and 25 inches in length and use your own watercolor paper. 140 pound Fabriano works really well. You can just have a lot of fun flinging paint all over it. or just do what I did and cut down an old watercolor. Now for the accordion or concertina folds. This one started out with a valley in the middle and then a peak at the left hand point and a peak up here, all six inches in width. You're going to be taking this sketchbook with you on outdoor excursions, so you need to weatherproof anything that's got watercolor on it. I've brushed on acrylic matte medium, and we're going to set this aside to dry while we do our next step. Each section of a handmade book is called a signature, and I have three sections here made up of a decorative paper, like scrapbooking paper, and three different kinds of scrapbooking paper. And then I have taken nine by 12 pieces of paper and folded up two or three in each signature. All these papers are very thick, 140 pounds for two of these packs and 90 some pounds for another one. So I use a bone folder to crease the paper and then fold it over in both directions. This is a Canson XL watercolor paper, and that's 140 pounds. See, 9 by 12 size, folded in half, gives you 9 tall and 6 inches wide. Once it's folded in half this way. So you wouldn't want to use Arches watercolor paper for this because if you fold it back and forth too many times then the crease starts to kind of crack and come apart. This is the watercolor paper from Canson XL. It's 140 pounds. This is going to be a sketchbook so um, even though that's not the world's highest quality watercolor paper it works great for sketches. And so does their mixed media paper. This is 98 pounds, which means it's thinner, but it's still 9 by 12 inches, so it'll fold into the same size. My two sketch papers we've already talked about are the Canson XL, and then this is my third paper. I like Fabriano Artistico, 140 pound paper. And it really will only fit maybe three 9 by 12 pieces in there folded up. Um, this, that's my more expensive paper. This is the Canson paper. And then this is the Canson uh, 98 pound uh, mixed media paper. So I can put four pieces of 9 by 12 paper folded in half. My scrapbook paper was cut two inches longer, so I could fold it over and make a little pocket using the bone folder here. And then I just sewed around the edges with my sewing machine. If you don't want to sew, you can use this art glitter glue, which is very strong, to glue at the top and the bottom, or even some uh, Fabri-Tac. That works really great. It's an acetone glue. 
I did the same for all three of these. And, you know, the sky's the limit. Whatever kind of decorative paper you want, you can use wrapping paper or double-sided paper, which is a little bit stronger for the decorative paper. Now we're going to do one example of how the three-hole pamphlet stitch works. We've got a cover of scrapbook paper to kind of keep the dirt off of the watercolor paper. They're all nine by 12, and you notice at the edge here where you folded them over into a six by nine, there's, this is called page creep. Doesn't bother me though. I don't care. If you want to, you can trim that off. Now you want to get them all about all tucked into the fold together. And you can hold them that way with um, binder clips. Just make sure you pinch them really good so that all the folds work together and match. And on one of the sides you can put a binder clip and then on the opposite side Put another binder clip and then this holds all the pages together while you poke holes in them. Yes. So I measure by my first knuckle of my thumb. That's about one inch from the bottom and poke a hole and one inch from the top to go all the way through all the paper including the cover of scrapbook paper. Now, if you have a magazine or something like that underneath here, then you could poke right through that. You don't have to have an awl like I have. You can use a big, you know, uh, push pin. You want it to come right out right on the spine. See it sticking right out there? So protect your fingers as they come through, as the point comes through. And then move it around. There's your measurement again, approximate measurement. Poke a hole with your punch there. Now I can just, you know, see, so you just want to be sure it's right on along the spine. We don't want it to come out in the front or the back, just right even with the spine there. Now the middle. This is a little bit harder to hold on to, but our sketchbook isn't too big. So push that through, watch your hand. And make sure it goes all the way through all the folded paper and the comes out on the spine here. Okay, now I can enlarge these holes with it all and because I'm going to be using some thicker thread coming through. So once I've got the holes punched through, then I can push with a, something a little thicker like this awl. Or maybe a, a big a doll needle if you had one. But it'll work out just fine if you just do it the way we already started. Get that middle hole a little bit bigger. Okay, so there. Now we have three holes. One, two, three. Next, we're going to sew them together. I use uh, binder needle or darning needle would work. Um, embroidery needle sometimes has a big enough eye on it to hold the kind of thread we're going to use. See this is really big. If you need to, to be able to thread it, get a one like that that has a larger eye. Now this one's already threaded with my wax thread, which I am measuring one, two lengths of the spine plus a little extra. And that gives us enough thread to sew the pamphlet stitch going in from the inside to the outside, inside middle. Hold on to it with your thumb if you feel like it might slip through. As you look at the back and find the top hole, put your needle through everything all the way into the inside. There you go. Don't pull too hard or else your little tail will come through and you'll have to redo it. You can tape that if you want to. Okay. Pull it tight enough so that it's not loose on the outside here. Alright, we're on the inside now at the top. We're gonna go we're gonna skip the middle hole and go all the way to the bottom. 
and push through from the inside to the outside and pull it tight and then go back to the middle again and come through the same middle hole that we did before when we started. Now as my needle comes out through I want to be sure it comes out on the opposite side of that little tail so that I have the needle coming in, in this case, the right hand side of the long thread there. I'm going to have to pull it tighter to make sure the front and the back are tight enough. Now I can get rid of the needle and tie a knot. Just let, oh, see that's kind of loose right there. We don't want that because the pages can kind of flop apart. So I'll just give it an extra little pull, making sure everything's nice and tight. Good, just making sure. Now, pull down from the top, won't pull up from the bottom. Okay. And either side of the middle string, this will tie it together and keep it from moving too much. Tie a square knot. This is waxed thread, so even if you just tied a granny knot, it still would hold together. The scissors and cut about half an inch away from your knot. And press them down here. Now, those threads can get wet with watercolor and they won't come apart. And they'll stay sturdy until you decide to take them out. Now we've got ourselves one signature. that has its pages and its cover bound together with a three-hole pamphlet stitch. Depending on how the pages fit together, you can do this with previously sketched pages or painted pages, and then continue sketching with them. This was the Sakura branch that I saw last week, and look at it, it's been blooming by itself in a glass of water, so I probably will sketch it again and keep track of the different weeks and how it looks. Now, this would work out just fine for a do-it-yourself sketchbook, a very simple book, and you could make several of them and just take them out one at a time when you're sketching and have different kinds of paper in there also, if you like. But I have plans for these other two signatures. As for this signature that's already bound into its cover, I could just slip it into my watercolor folded accordion leporello. And I could just slip it. It's watercolor paper. So I could fit that in the front section and put the other watercolor paper in the back section and they would support the book overall and especially if I sew them in so if I take this back section and sew it to the cover itself and then I take the mixed media paper and I sew that into the other section here I'll have three sections with my most frequently used sketch paper on the outside of the book. Okay, so let's attach both of these signatures now. Let's start out with the one that's going to fit in the middle. Okay, that's the one with the four sheets of mixed media paper. Got the three holes already punched, and I've punched them all the way through the heavy cover of the 140-pound watercolor paper. And let's go ahead and do this. Remember, I was waiting for that paper to dry from the coating of matte medium, so it'll be waterproof. Okay, so in through the middle. And down through the bottom, come out on the 
inside and not in the middle on the top back to the outside there pull it through and then pull it tight see where the tail is and then push back in from outside the fold back in and put the needle on the other side of the long thread look tight Cut off the excess to about a half inch. And your second signature is now bound into the large cut of the book. And it won't fall out when you're outdoors sketching somewhere. Okay. So two signatures are sewn into the heavy cover. And one signature is just placed there so that it could be removable. Now this is my multimedia paper, mixed media paper that I like to sketch with. Here is a little slot where I might cut up some spare pieces of maybe 4x6 postcard paper or uh, to keep it in there for my sketches or else this I might put some notes that I've taken. Uh, While well, I've done some experiments in the studio, addresses, all kinds of different things you can put in there and keep together with your sketches that you've been doing. So this will be thicker once I sew in the remaining two signatures. I can use a rubber band or a ribbon, some other kind of closure if I want to hold this book together while I'm getting to my location, or I can use binder clips. There are bigger ones than this. And I made sure that my sketch, my premium sketch paper, the mixed media paper, it's the thinner paper. I made sure that goes into the valley part of it uh, so that I can clip together and do some quick sketches on location even while standing and the wind won't blow this open. Okay, so I'm going to sew this signature in on one side here, same way as before. Poke the holes, then uh, sew with the thread. And on the back here, I used my leftover watercolor paper from the cover, you know, to put some notes or postcards or extra little blank pieces of paper. So here's the first one we made. It's the single signature with uh, just the uh, decorative paper cover. Just slip it in there and then that way it makes it removable. This line here, the fold over that I have helps to accommodate the thickness of all these three watercolor, water media signatures. I still haven't decided what I want to use for a closure. Probably just some jute or some twine. Wrap it around the middle here and tie it together. But you can get started on your own now. Use instead of a bone folder, use your edge of your scissors. Use an awl or a push pin. Uh, a needle and some thread. Embroidery thread or yarn will work as well. Okay. See you next time. Thanks for watching. But wait, there's more. See my playlist for smaller pocket-sized sketchbooks.